This is your Barbados Today Evening News Update for Wednesday, November 21st. So glad you can join us. I'm Frenella Wedderburn. Two young children are nursing injuries after being struck by a truck on their way home from school. According to reports, around 3.27 p.m., the students of the Hilda Skeen Primary School, aged 9 and 5, were walking home along Union Road, St. Philip, from the direction of Duncan Road. Acting Police Public Relations Officer Sergeant Michael Blackman told Barbados Today at the scene that the students may have ran across the road after three large dogs started to bark. Both children were taken to the Queen Elizabeth Hospital. In other news this Wednesday, 78 workers at the state-owned Caribbean Broadcasting Corporation will be laid off and another 17 have opted for voluntary separation. News of this following another round of talks between management, union and workers this evening at CBC's offices in The Pine. Officials tell Barbados today the cuts affect all departments. CBC 94.7 will also be shut down. A local economist is suggesting that government's decision to slash cooperation tax by 80 to 90 percent could help the private sector absorb recently retrenched public workers. University of the West Indies lecturer and former president of the Barbados Economic Society, Jeremy Stephen, contends that businesses now have the fiscal space to either raise salaries or hire more workers. The hope would have been essentially get all this space automatically now that the private sector picks up the slack for the um, the public sector because you know all these people right. you, you, you got you, you know you got a window of about five over thirty mm -hmm. and then again let's say two point five because most of these companies might get more than a million a year so you got a window of about uh, uh, two point five over thirty so that's less than ten percent oh so you you got definitely um, ninety ninety percent eighty to ninety ninety percent. Uh, reduction in your effective tax rate. <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. if you want to walk out, you're greater and if the unions, and you can use these as court. Unions know we're going to ensure that the private sector in Canada are, you know, that they don't have the space, the fiscal space, or the profitability space to, to hire people if as needs arise, like you say, or at least raise salaries according to. And, and people would say that the private sector has been raising salaries year on year. For some time and being and at least been amenable to the unions, but it'll be interesting to see how this all works out. Now, government's decision to slash the tax is already ripping dividends. Just yesterday, Prime Minister Mia Motley announced a massive reduction in the tax from 25% to 1 to 5.5%. Explaining the move was intended to make the country compliant with the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. Today, Maritime Affairs and Blue Economy Minister Kirk Humphrey told Barbados today he has already received queries from interest in the creation of new businesses in the fishing and marine sector. First of all, let me praise the Prime Minister and the government of Barbados for what I think is a, a brilliant move. Uh, the Prime Minister described it in a way as us being brought to this moment because we were signed on to it without even being ready for it. But uh, the way the government has responded is amazing. I will answer your question by way of an example. As soon as I finished speaking this morning, a young man came to me and said that they're looking at creating a regional body, a regional organization, private sector, for tackling the sargasm issue. And because the government of Barbados has now lowered the taxes so much, that while they were not looking at Barbados at all, that overnight, Barbados has become the place where they want to house that regional body. That is an example of what will happen, not only in the fishing industry, but in all sectors. There are going to be people who want to come to Barbados because it is now a, a low tax jurisdiction and do their business. It is going to affect the fishing industry, of course. You know, there are a number of people who told me too in the industry that they wanted to come to Barbados. And there are a number of issues. It wasn't only the tax rate. It was that the time to set up a business in Barbados took too long. Or it was just too bureaucratic, too cumbersome. People had ideas to work in Barbados and they left. So yes, we're going to lower the tax rate because it makes sense. But also we have to make the ease of doing business really an ease for people to do business. Major changes are on the cards for the island's 52nd Independence Parade. Today, Chairman of the Interministerial Committee, Jeffrey Bostick, told the press launch at St. Anne's Fort the event will move from 
Garrison Savannah to Kensington Oval. He said the parade will see greater participation from Barbadians, particularly children, to ensure that it impacts the country and bring the nation together. First of all, in order to involve as many school children so that they already get to feel for things Barbadian, we determined that we will invite the participation, the attendance of about 5,000 students across our primary and secondary schools in Barbados. And this for us is an exciting thing. The Ministry of Education has been very, very collaborative in terms of trying to get this effort going. We also decided that um, the, we will create a leadership program which will be centered around, in this case, the head boy, head girl from each primary and secondary school and they're going to have some uh, leadership badges pinned on them on Independence Day. And the Prime Minister herself will deliver an independence message on the parade, which is also something new. This parade will also see for the first time the performance by one of our cultural icons, and I will leave that for Minister of Culture to deal with later, but suffice it to say that it, uh, it is going to be a new song which will be done by Edwin Yearwood. Barbados Today, news you can trust. To regional news now, a 12-year-old primary school boy in Trinidad has pleaded guilty to issuing death threats to Police Commissioner Gary Griffith and has been released into the custody of his parents until sentencing. The child, who cannot be identified because he is a minor, pleaded guilty to misusing a telephone to send a threatening message when he appeared before Master Nazare Ali in the Port of Spain Children's Court today. The magistrate has since requested a report from the Probation Services Division to assist in determining the appropriate punishment. Under Section 106 of the Summary Offences Act, the offence carries a maximum penalty of $200, that's a fine, or up to a month in prison. The child will be sentenced on January 16 next year. The court heard that a call had been received by the E999 operator from a mobile phone with a male caller saying, we are coming to kill Gary Griffith. The call was then transferred to the E999's police corporal on duty, where the caller repeated his threat to kill Griffith. The caller then extended his death threat to the police corporal who took the call. And on the international scene, British Prime Minister Theresa May is to return to Brussels on Saturday to complete her Brexit negotiations. The Prime Minister said there had been very good progress in her meeting with Jean-Claude Juncker. German Chancellor Angela Merkel threatened to withdraw from the leaders' summit unless the deal was finalised before the meeting on Sunday. We've given sufficient direction to our negotiators, I hope for them to be able to resolve the remaining issues and that work will start immediately. Uh, I now plan to return for further meetings, including with President Juncker, on Saturday uh, to discuss how we can bring to a conclusion this process and bring it to a conclusion in the interests of all our people. What are the problems that need to be solved so that the summit can go ahead and all of this can be signed off? Well, there are some remaining issues which we have discussed this evening with President, I've discussed with President Juncker this evening. We've been able to give direction to our negotiators on resolving those issues. Uh, so further progress has been made. And as I say, I'll be returning on Saturday for further meetings, including, again with President Juncker,
to discuss how we can uh, ensure that we can conclude this process in the way that is in the interest of all our people. And that's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.fabulousstudy.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates and like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM. I'm Fernella Wedderburn. Good evening.